So did you know that Hallmark has released over 300 new Christmas movies throughout the years? 300 of these things. Imagine the potential for sequels. So in today's video, we are going to explore some of the most beloved Hallmark Christmas movies we think deserve a sequel. That's right. Despite their popularity, many fan favorite Hallmark films have left us hanging with unresolved storylines and characters we want to see more of. So today we're going to dive into specific movies that fans like us have been clamoring for, discussing the characters, plots, and why these stories resonate so much. Let's dive in. So here's what we're going to do. Jennifer and I each have a list of five. We've not shared those lists before this conversation, so it's going to be a little organic. We're going to have some fun with it. My first one, Jennifer, I think you got to have a sequel to A Built More Christmas. If anything, because of the production value, they really went over the top with this. It was absolutely a fan favorite. Plenty of people have called it the best Hallmark movie ever made. And I thought that the story was so great, the characters so endearing. I would love to see a part two. There was also this cool time travel element. I won't spoil it if you've not seen it, but I think that that could be fun to play with a little bit more. What do you think? And kind of the reversal of what we saw in the first movie, and we'll we'll leave it at that. But yes, I agree. That would be a great sequel. Love it. What's yes. next? Yeah, so my next one is A Heidelberg Holiday. Now, oh, you took my... <laughs> listen, Dang I it. love Jenna Claire Mason. I think she did a wonderful job in this particular movie. It had overseas travel, German holiday market. It was just Christmas all over the place. And I loved it for that reason. And I think part two would be so cool to see how the relationship that she had developed and her art, how it continued to unfold. And when the way the movie ended last year kind of made it seem like we might get her visiting the Heidelberg market again. And I'm here for it as long as she works in her stinking booth this time, because last year she was nary in that booth. <laughs> Get to work, Jenna Claire makes it. She was too busy sightseeing, as I would be too. I mean, I understand. Anyway, we'll move on. Third one on my list is Haul Out the Holly. Now, I really, this might come as a surprise because I, it does. Yeah. I want to see a sequel of this just for the simple fact that this movie series always seems to get fans really excited about the holiday season. And I love that for that reason alone. We've got two of these already. I think a third one could be fun. Perhaps, you know, if the main couple's welcoming a baby, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there as a, you know, a prospect or a possibility. But I think that there's some potential there. I love the neighborhood vibes, the ensemble cast, anything with Melissa Peterman to get her back on television in this particular role that she has, I think would be just like top notch. Yeah, they can make five more of those, and I'll, I'll watch all of them. My next one is Hanukkah on Rye. Now, I went deep into the vault on this particular one, but this was my favorite one that we did, what, two seasons ago now? Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Hanukkah and Rye, it involves sort of competing New York delis and the whole nine yards, and at the end they get together, and it's a whole thing. And I, I just loved the story there. I loved the B cast in that, the family members that survived the main couple were great. And I just thought it would be really great to have a story with them actually running their deli and business together, you know, so we got to see more of that. And the bubbies, right? The Isn't that bubbies. what they call themselves? Yes. The yeah. bubbies. Yeah. <laughs> Give me more bubbies. <laughs> more bubbies. And my last one, listen, I love an ensemble cast. And I think when you've got a good one and it works... You want to see more of them. And for me, Holiday Road fits that bill to a T. I think seeing that cast, and granted, I don't know what you would do with the story to get them back together. But if there could be a prospect where maybe they're getting together to go see one of them who's in the hospital or one of them oh. eats something. Or... <laughs> one of them is on their deathbed. Let's get back in the van, everybody. <laughs> no, I'm just pitfalling here. Anything to get this cast back together, I think, would be really, really great because I thought there was really great chemistry. That one had so much heart and really just felt like it really drew you into each of these people's stories in a way that I thought was really unique and really good storytelling. And I think that it would be great for a sequel. So Holiday Road is my fifth one. Okay, I love it. Next up, I will give my five. Number one for me, Snow Bride. Now listen. Uh if you have been around since the beginning 
of our podcast. It is no secret that I am maybe the number one fan, I don't know, of Snow Bride. Okay, it has Katrina Law. It's an older movie. And I would love nothing more than to see these characters again. You had Claire St. Clair, who was a villain. She was dating the male lead. And now she's in the movie. She was dating the brother and family drama. I would like to see the mom. Maybe she can get married and be the Snow Bride because she was kind of dating the um, house manager Peters at the end of the movie or they were kind of dancing at least so maybe you know maybe get the band back together again Snow Bride part two that would be a lot all right I know it won't happen probably but a girl country a girl country next up you talked about an ensemble cast we have not covered this one on the podcast yet but we should five star Christmas has Bethany Joy Lenz and Victor Webster and it focuses around a family in and I don't even know what the premise would be. I'm, I'm not, you know, a writer. But I just wanted to see them all together again. They were funny. It had heart. I was really invested in the lead's relationships. So give me more of that, please. Well, let's go back next- with that. Maybe next year for 12 pods, we'll throw that in. We should. We should. You would really like it, I think. So, spoiler alert there. Next up, the Santa Stakeout. Okay, so this one has Paul Campbell and Tamira Mowry, and they were on, like, a crime-solving caper. Give me more of that, because their banter was amazing. My husband even liked this movie. He watched it with me when it aired. Hilarious. More of that. That could be a continuing series, as far as I'm concerned. Please. All right. Next up, you stole Heidelberg, so i got to move on. Ghost of Christmas Always. Again, you got to watch this movie, Josh. It's so good. Okay. So Ghost of Christmas Always, without giving everything away, does involve some ghosts who kind of, it's like a, it's a wonderful life thing, who find a lost soul and try to turn them around for the holidays. So there's enough there that I think we could follow them again on another lost soul to turn into a warmed holiday heart. And the cast was amazing. The production value is amazing. There was some time travel stuff, but you could do it in a different era this time. Please. Now, I'm struggling on my last one because, again, you took one. I think I'm going to go with Christmas in Angel Falls, which is a 2017 movie starring Rachel Boston and Paul Green. So she was a guardian angel, Gabby, sent to the town of Angel Falls to restore its Christmas spirit. This is not the type of movie I should usually like. It gets a little too weird for me sometimes with the angel stuff. But this movie was so sweet and so special. And I just kind of want to see what she's up to now. Like, what's she doing? Is she back up in heaven? Is she hanging out in Angel Falls? What's Gabby up to? I want to know. Gabby up to? You know, the thing I love about this list, these 10, Jennifer, is that there's such diversity in the type of stories that we want to see more of. You know, we didn't just pick Mm -hmm. one type of thing. And I think that that really speaks to there can be really quality ones in all of these sort of sub-genres. The funny ones, the ensemble ones, the heartfelt ones. There can be great stories that really deserve part twos, part threes. Yeah, we've gotten some sequels throughout the years. I mean, the Christmas and Evergreen movie, we covered the first one. We'll put a link in our... um, description in case you missed that review love the first one they did subsequent movies in evergreen so we've gotten that before they've done multiple god wink movies but those aren't really sequels and like the time for him to come home all those those aren't sequels as much as like series kind of thematic series um so and yeah we're getting our three wiser men of christmas instead of the three wise men of christmas sequel in winter of 2024 which we're excited about but let's do more let's get the bands back together come on guys So we want to hear from you. If you liked our list of 10, let us know what you think in the comments below. And if we missed one that you're dying to see a sequel of, heck, let us know. We want to talk about it. Maybe we missed one or two that, you know, might be deserving of being on the list. And heck, we just love talking about Christmas movies. So give us a comment and we will weigh in and enjoy all of your comments and suggestions. That's right. And that, friends, is another episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? Special thanks to our good friend Nick Schwarz for his amazing theme song he wrote for us and to all of you for taking the time to watch here on our YouTube channel. That's right. If you like our podcast, be sure to tell a friend, subscribe, review. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Give us a follow over there. You'll see what we're going to talk about next. And 
As always, you can connect with us on our website at doyouwatchwhatiwatch.com. Our next review will be number 11 in our 12 Pods of Christmas Summer Series. And you have a special guest in the background. Hi, Molly. Hi, Molly. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be taking the deep dive on 2012's A Bride for Christmas. And here's the plot summary. A single man tries to win a bet by getting a woman recovering from a broken engagement to marry him by Christmas. We will have much to discuss. And until then. You want to say it with me? One, two, three. May your days be merry and bright. We'll see you next time. Where you're here. <laughs> <laughs>